there lived a man whose life became a cautionary tale of prepping. Not only was he heavily invested in being a prepper or survivalist, he was the father of the modern day prepper movement. In fact, he coined the term survivalist. He became a prominent figure within the survivalist community in the 1970s and 80s. His name was Kurt Saxon, and he is one of the most important yet forgotten figures of this slice of the American culture. Born Donald Eugene Sisko on March 6, 1932, Kurt grew up in a world overshadowed by the looming threat of world wars and the Cold War nuclear conflict. Details about Saxon's education and early life are not well documented. It's unclear whether he pursued higher education or held formal employment before becoming involved in survivalism and self-publishing. Saxon's interest in survivalism and self-reliance likely developed during the 1960s. Like many others during this time, Saxon may have been influenced by events such as the Cuban Missile Crisis and the Vietnam War, which heightened fears of societal collapse and the need for personal preparedness. Saxon authored numerous books on survivalism, self-sufficiency, and related topics. His most famous work is arguably The Poor Man's James Bond. Saxon's writing style was often blunt and straightforward, reflecting his no-nonsense approach to preparedness. Publishers such as Lumpanics Unlimited, which specialized in controversial and fringe topics, distributed Saxon's books and newsletters to a niche audience, but not all of his books were so specialized. His 1976 book, Medicines Like Grandad Used to Make, was included in the U.S. Department of Health Bibliography of Medical History. The Poor Man's James Bond was intended to be a comprehensive guide to self-reliance and preparedness, and would become a cornerstone of the survivalist movement. It came under scrutiny because it also described how to make homemade bombs, poisons, and chemicals. Saxon's transition to authorship and self-publishing in the 1970s aligned with the rise of the survivalist movement in the United States. He mentioned that he was involved with several controversial groups in the early 1960s, such as the American Nazi Party, the John Birch Society, the Minutemen, not because he subscribed to any of these people's beliefs, but because he wanted to see what they were about. Later on, he would even check out the Church of Scientology. He was definitely part of the overall conservative movement, however, as he did express his distaste and hate for leftist or communist groups. But the various groups and communities that he was associated with weren't all negative or controversial. He also found an audience with groups that shared his interests in self-reliance and alternative living. Some of these groups splintered into the modern-day homestead and firearms enthusiast groups. Saxon advocated for self-reliance and preparedness for various scenarios, including economic collapse, natural disasters, and social unrest. His views and writings often sparked controversy due to their extreme nature and perceived militancy. His advocacy for armed self-defense and his blunt rhetoric contributed to his divisive reputation within both mainstream and survival communities. Some critics argued that his work promoted paranoia and excessive preparation for unlikely scenarios. In his review of The Poor Man's James Bond, survivalist Cody Lundeen criticized the book's emphasis on violence and extreme measures, stating that it brings nothing to the table except fear. The extreme preparedness for unlikely scenarios does indeed detract from more practical and immediate concerns such as personal economic instability or community resilience. Even James Wesley Rawls highlights the ethical considerations surrounding Saxon's writings, cautioning readers about the legal and moral implications of certain survival tactics. Discussions on online forums and social media platforms often include debates about the ethical responsibility of survivalist authors like Saxon to provide accurate information without promoting illegal or dangerous activities. Indeed, one of Saxon's experiments cost him some fingers from his left hand. Despite the controversies surrounding his work, Saxon maintained a dedicated following among those who shared his beliefs. Supporters viewed him as a pragmatic advocate for personal preparedness in an uncertain world. As the years passed, Kurt's views on survivalism began to evolve. He grew disillusioned with the fear-mongering and paranoia that often accompanied discussions of preparedness, and instead advocated for a more holistic approach to self-sufficiency. Locally, as more and more people would learn about his history, he would be somewhat of a curiosity in his Arkansas community. While local police always mentioned he never seemed to really mind their presence or show any hostility, he definitely displayed a reluctance to interact with them. His neighbors would even report that all of his so-called explosions were never huge. 
they were akin to seeing if a chemical experiment worked and that he never did anything that couldn't be found by going to the library and looking it up. Kurt began to speak out more against what he saw as the militarization of the survivalist movement, urging his followers to focus not on preparing for conflict, but on building resilient communities and fostering connections with their neighbors. One of his final works is You Can't Trust a Patriot, published in 1995, and it goes into more detail about where his thoughts ended up, the result of nearly 30 years of self-reflection. Many people got up in arms about his use of the term patriot, thinking about the name too literally and lacking any discernment of the message. Today, Kurt Saxon's name isn't widely known. He's since been replaced by others in the online space who are either survival types or snake oil grifters that sell doom and gloom for ad revenue or merchandise sales. His influence doesn't even register in the mainstream idea of prepping. Kurt squandered his money on projects that never bore any fruit and general mismanagement of funds earned from his books, even though he was pretty frugal in terms of rejecting mainstream luxury items. He suffered a stroke around 2012 and lived in a nursing home for the rest of his life. Nothing much followed until his death in 2021. Sadly, he was largely forgotten in the modern day circles he helped create. May you find peace and strength in the bonds of community. Until the next video, be good, stay safe, and have a good one.